Hello and welcome to Recyclist. It's August 23rd, 2024. I'm your host, Eric Provost, and this is your weekly roundup of all the biggest news stories in the world of waste, gas, and energy presented by Diamond Scientific. First things first, and as always, let's take a quick look at the stock market and five stocks on the move this week within the world of waste, gas, and energy. As of August 23rd, 2024, Amatis Incorporated is currently trading at $2.65 per share. Opal Fuels Incorporated is up to $3.79 per share. GFL Environmental is sitting at $43.50 per share. Casella Waste Systems is now sitting at $106.85 per share. And Waste Connections is all the way up to $186.21 per share. But moving into the news, we have a few big wastewater stories to talk about. First up, according to Precedence Research, the water and wastewater treatment market size is now predicted to increase from a value of almost $328 billion in 2023 to approximately $652 billion by 2034. The market is now forecasted to expand at a combined annual growth rate of 6.5% from 2024 through 2034. The water and wastewater treatment market is driven by an increasing number of industries, increasing toxic wastewater, and changing consumer preferences. While North America currently owns the third largest share of the market, it is observed to grow at the fastest rate in the water and wastewater treatment market during the forecast period. It's observed that industry groups such as the Water Environment Federation and the American Water Works Association help the industry grow by providing technical knowledge, advocating best practices, and enabling research and innovation. And up next on the wastewater front, Green Gas USA and Wayne Sanderson Farms recently announced a collaboration to produce renewable natural gas at a portfolio of Wayne Sanderson facilities across the U.S. by leveraging existing wastewater treatment and biogas assets to bring pipeline quality RNG to market. They will target locations with the largest potential to decrease methane emissions and those with the capacity for co-location of a liquid CO2 recovery system. CEO and founder of Green Gas USA, Mark Fetton, said, quote, Wayne Sanderson Farms has already proven themselves a leader in efforts to reduce waste and promote circularity within their operating portfolio. We are incredibly proud for the opportunity to work with Wayne Sanderson Farms to build upon the success of their existing biogas operations and support the company in achieving their climate targets, end quote. And lastly, on the wastewater front, Infiltrator Water Technologies, a subsidiary of Advanced Drainage Systems Incorporated, or ADS, is now set to acquire Aranco Systems Incorporated, a manufacturer of advanced on-site septic wastewater treatment products based in Sutherland, Oregon. The parties expect the transaction to close in the third quarter of ADS's 2025 fiscal year, subject to customary closing conditions. ADS president and CEO Scott Barber said, quote, Aranco accelerates the company's growth in the advanced wastewater treatment space, opening up new opportunities in a highly fragmented and fast-growing segment of on-site septic wastewater. This acquisition is a great strategic fit for the infiltrator business. The enhanced portfolio of complementary solutions combined with the broader sales force, geographic reach, and distribution footprint will drive further penetration in this attractive segment. End quote. And this next story is for all you racing fans out there, as Jivo Incorporated has secured a new purchase agreement with Shell Global Solutions Deutschland to supply a low-carbon intensity fuel blend stock to be utilized in the realm of motorsports. This renewable blend stock is designed to meet the high demand of competitive racing while also contributing to reduced carbon emissions. The company also focuses on verifying and tracking the carbon footprint of its operations through its subsidiary, Verity. This agreement with Shell represents a convergence of technological advancement and environmental responsibility in the competitive arena of motorsports. 
And just a reminder, Recyclist is a registered trademark of Diamond Scientific, an industry leader in gas analysis, instrumentation, and solutions. Make sure to visit them online at diamondsci.com. That's diamondsci.com. Or you can even set up a personalized presentation by calling 321-223-7500. Now on with the news. And up next, Waste Company Recology reported several sustainability milestones and continued emission reductions in their latest sustainability report, which covers fiscal year 2023. Recology's current goal is to power its facilities with, quote, 100% renewable or carbon-free electricity and convert 75% of the landfill gas it collects into energy by 2028. Those targets set last year after Recology met its goal to improve fleet emissions. The company said it has reduced its scope 1 and 2 emissions 23% since 2018. And up next, Q Energy, a Utah-based methane abatement and energy company, is now planning to expand its efforts to convert methane into clean electricity and carbon credits from landfill sites, following a successful pilot program in 2023 at Utah's Weber County Landfill. The company says it is currently within a, quote, land and expand phase with plans to add five additional landfills in northern Utah that are within a short drive of the initial site. The company's strategy aims to slash Utah's emission footprint by abating 95 percent of methane emissions. Q Energy is also working with waste management companies to introduce this capability nationwide with rollouts planned next year. Now moving to Canada for just a second, the Canadian government this past week announced it will award up to $6.59 million Canadian to Bioindustrial Innovation Canada to support the development of technologies to produce bioenergy, biofuels, and biomaterials. The funding was awarded by Agriculture and Agri-Food Canada through the AgriScience Program Clusters Component, an initiative under the Sustainable Canadian Agricultural Partnership. The AgriScience program aims to accelerate innovation by providing funding and support for pre-commercial science activities and research that benefits the agriculture and agri-food sector. The program's cluster component supports projects intended to mobilize industry, government, and academia through partnerships that address priority, national themes, and horizontal issues. And speaking of federal funding, the city of Philadelphia has been awarded more than $1.3 million in federal funds from the U.S. Department of Energy through the Energy Efficiency and Conservation Block Grant Program to support four projects that will expand access to energy education, build resilience to heat in vulnerable communities, scale the local clean energy workforce, and support efforts to decarbonize the school district of Philadelphia's buildings. The four programs are known as the Energy Burdened Community Education Program, the Cool Roofs Program, the Clean Energy Workforce Development Strategy, and the Energy Conservation and Management in Schools Program. Elizabeth Lackanow, the Interim Director of the Office of Sustainability, said, quote, As the clean energy transition gains momentum, our office is exploring what it takes to build a robust, sustained clean energy workforce that creates wealth opportunities for Philadelphians. With the Department of Energy's Energy Efficiency and Conservation Block Grant, we will cement key partnerships with the School District of Philadelphia and the Energy Coordinating Agency to advance energy efficiency projects in municipal buildings, public schools, and across our neighborhoods. End quote. And staying in Pennsylvania for our last story, BP subsidiary Archaea Energy and Waste Connections Incorporated celebrated the opening of their first renewable natural gas plant in Pennsylvania this past week. The plant is adjacent to the Bethlehem landfill in Lower Saucon Township and owned by a Waste Connections subsidiary. The Bethlehem Landfill Plant can process up to 3,500 standard cubic feet of landfill gas per minute into RNG, enough gas to heat more than 14,000 homes annually. Archaea Energy CEO Starley Sykes said, quote, We are safely and efficiently scaling up at pace and building momentum with this new plant in Bethlehem. 
Arkea has brought six plants online to date in 2024, and we're proud to continue to bring our commitment to capture landfill emissions and provide customers with low-emission, low-carbon fuel to the Keystone State. End quote. And that has been your August 23rd, 2024 News Roundup brought to you by Recyclist, a registered trademark of Diamond Scientific. I've been your host, Eric Provost, and we'll see you back here next week for another brand new episode of Recyclist. Thank you.